Welcome to Rush Mode, our podcast with three topics, ten minutes each. Uh, my name's Red. I'm Matt. Um, before we get into it, I just want to say, if you want to suggest some topics we can talk about, anything zombies related, post a comment, and be sure to give a like if you like it, and subscribe if you want to see more. All that. So, first topic of the day is La Source Noir. So, backstory and origins. Um, when Group 935 opens the, kind of the portals, and they open up, like, the what's that like the crypt beneath uh yeah the excavation site they they use these discs the uh um Is it the gramophones Is that what yeah, gramophone about? discs yeah and like they, they're from specifically a group called the source noir and that they use those to open those portals so the source noir translates to uh the black sun basically i think it's is that like a french maybe it's, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So translates to, to the Black Sun, and Black Sun has a bunch of occult stuff and some history behind it. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Um. So okay, Matt, are you familiar with like the first? I think this is the first instance of like the Black Sun directly. I'm pretty sure. Maybe there's something to Darius. I don't remember, but in the the Black Ops GK Nova viral, there was this uh, little cipher thing with. It's got what is that the I F Providence on the yeah pyramid? yeah 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 but it's replaced it's with the Black, Black Sun, Sun right yeah okay yeah yes. and, that, and that that whole thing is very very interesting like this is worth a podcast of its own honestly like it's got a bunch of little kind of messages in it um, in particular beware of the Black Sun search the truth it is still there there's also something about building eighty seven which is, ties into some of the wonder weapons for some reason. Um, and then there's also the thing about the uh, belief in the Veltais, which is the world ice theory, which is another Nazi occultist thing. And then the, the dead start walking. So it all weirdly ties in. Um, what do you? What can you pull from that? I suppose. Well, I guess it's it. It makes sense that we would later see it with the keepers and the apothecons, because the the whole Black Sun. Um, being sort of a, a symbol or at least connected to like Thule and and the the at least in, in German sort of occultism the uh the sort of like precursor Germanic race that's that's been lost to time that they were trying to reconnect with um and I think it also had some properties right it's like I, I don't know if the sun itself had a like any physical properties or it was like a representation of um i guess connecting to like certain ley lines or they said there was some sort of mystical energy um and i think mm. it connected it to let me make sure because i'm pulling from my book here yeah geomantic energy grid that could be tapped through yoga and whose center lay somewhere in the black forest so i don't think uh i, I don't know if there's the idea i'm just, just speaking off topic right now but um yeah. I don't know if that was I, just by reading that really fast that they're saying that there was like a, a like the black sun's like location was in the black forest and that the symbols themselves are just sort of representation. I like I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if the symbols hold power or they're just symbols themselves. But anyway, it connects to occult energy, ley lines, and this symbol of like the precursor race that existed. Um, what is it? They said in like Hyperborea, which sometimes they connect to Atlantis and and the, the Thule. Um, and then the, sort of the whole, I guess, what is it like the, the world ice theory that everything right. is, is, um, I think it's like ice is like the fundamental particle of everything. And that long before, you know, uh, modern civilizations, these super civilizations exist that were then lost to time and, and stuff like that. So, um, anyway, getting back to zombies, it seems that it would eventually evolve into these precursor races being the keepers and the apothecons. And that's why they would don those symbols and any type of, you know, as you I'm looking right now, seeing the picture from Shangri-La, any type of ancient civilization or, or some type of a of place of occult significance would thus don the symbol of this, this precursor race, I guess. Um, right. So. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that's definitely what they were going for. Like even this far back, you know, Shangri-La before, even know what the keepers were it was just the vril right and this clearly i mean this connects to like these pyramids that are flying around on the on the image yeah very similar i, I think the implication might be this is like them sending the uh the, the you know the moon pyramids i guess i guess yeah. they're rebuilt and they're sending them 
throughout the game. Because, yeah, you know, they, they appear in the moon loading screen, too. Well, it reminds me, like, I know Anon on the forum posted their, their uh, thread about ley lines, but it seems to, when you look especially into, like, Nazi occultism, they, they really were obsessed with these, like, energy grids and mystical energy. So I guess it, it makes sense that, yeah, you have these weird, like, anti-gravity devices and things teleporting and why you you would see these pyramids moving. Because I guess if you have this black sun, right, and it's a, it's somehow connected to these... Uh, points of of like mystical energy and then i guess it's just kind of like yeah structures will be able to move from one point to the other because of i don't know like either like some weird anti-gravity technology or some type of like like uh what's the word i'm looking for teleportation um right so it totally makes sense that's why it shows up in places like that i mean connecting back to the source noir thing right like if we can assume then uh, like maybe the shadow man or just some of the Apothecons, like, laid the seeds for this group called the Source Noir, whoever they are. Mm. Like, and then they created those the discs, or, like, the, the music, so but, that Group 935 would accidentally open up the, the portals and everything, and, and create origins and all that. I don't know if this is what Treyarch intended, but it actually makes a lot of sense that it's music. Because um, at first I thought it was just weird, maybe it's just, like, simple gameplay. Like, oh, it's Easter egg shenanigans, but... You know, you think of, like, music and meditation and sort of, like, energy frequencies. It, I, I mm -hmm. guess it, it could make sense that this is then um, sort of distilled into music as almost like a... Um, it's kind of... It's hidden, but you wouldn't think of it having, like, any, any power or meaning because, oh, it's just music. But yet, I guess there's still... You know, from music, there's a, emotion can be conveyed and there's even the... Uh, like I said, like like the, the frequency of it. So I guess it's it connects in that manner that maybe it is some weird type of like energy or whatever that's being projected and by playing it it's able to to open up the the tombs you know what i mean yeah i don't know if that was just kind of rambling but i was just thinking of how it, it we just read about like yoga meditation music um you know, i think um i, I wonder also there's another question good is this like this symbology is it tied to the uh I mean, the whole, you know, you're, you're talking about the ley lines thing. Does this tie into the Apothecon Sun? Like, because that has all the yes. ley lines from the I... islands together. And I think it's it's blue specifically just because they don't want to associate with the Black Sun because the connotation yeah, is Yeah, I think they probably distanced themselves from the Nazis, but I, I totally believe the Apothecon Sun was, was the their, their Black Sun. It, it's, I think maybe we've tapped onto something else here that uh, could be ex expanded upon in a thread, but Maybe why, like, we have the perk jingles and... Because I was thinking about the, the songs in Shadows of Evil. And it's like, oh, what if it's all the, the in-game music is is actually, like, related to the Apothecons, the Keepers, I mean, Samantha and all of them. Like, music as a source of power, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Like, it kind of, I guess, a way I, I could totally see Treyarch kind of canonizing these things. Um, yeah, but there's some, there's some, you know, stuff to that. I mean, like, like Keepers symbols... And themselves are have power. I think yeah. I think the same with the Bothcon symbols. Like like the uh, the boxes in Shadows of Evil are like protected by keeper magic. Like you can't break into them because they're so, it's like yeah. a, it's like a spell kind of thing put onto it. Yeah, it's like one step, you know, from writing to then just like music notes to to sort of conveying something. I mean, like I said earlier, there's you know, when you listen to, to music, especially certain types of music, you know, they, they evoke certain emotions and memories and things. So I guess it, it would make sense why these would be imbued with certain weird mystical energies, especially if like listening to something on some frequency. And I guess it connects to um, even the whole, all the, the Black Ops stuff with Mason, with, you know, like the radio, uh, what was it, the like number stations and stuff like that. Like there is a, a sort of a connection there. You know what I mean? With with, with just yeah. listening to something and it, it being able to to trigger um, memories. Yeah, and definitely, and that and like the the symbols themselves kind of representing yeah. some form of power. Like yeah, yes, like yeah, the numbers. numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, I think I said last thing. We just say meditation. I mean, I'm sure when people meditate, they listen to music. You think of uh, even in in religious ceremonies or even just in in, in um, I always think of like the Gregorian chants, stuff like that. Like. The music has always been a way to, it, whether it's communing with God or re or, or to represent something religious. Um, so there's certainly some power there. I mean, that's why Bard is a class in D&D. Our next topic is about the sort of moral ambiguity of 
what we're doing in zombies. I mean, it's kind of this running theme where, you know, I think, Matt, you've brought it up before, like the lesser of two evils, like some... The things we do in-game are not necessarily always the best thing. I mean, that's kind of, you know, it, it, it goes all the way back to the beginning. So, good to that. What do you think, Matt? Let's start. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, right? Because the, the are we the baddies, right? Is that, what, what? I know it's a, it's from a, an English show. I think it's show. from a Key and Peele sketch. Yeah, Key and Peele sketch, yeah. yeah. Is sure. it Key and Peele? Okay, maybe maybe it's probably maybe been not. done in Baltimore. I, I, I feel like it was, but anyway, it, it's from a comedy thing, but it's just fitting that it's Nazis. Um. But, uh, yeah, I, I think there's, I mean, I guess there's good characters in this series, but the actions of, uh, that matter the most seem to be sort of less than, uh, scrupulous characters. You know, you have the, the, the original, uh, storyline kind of following Richtofen and then sort of Maxis and, um, you know, in, in the world at war, Black Ops days. And it always felt like there was, uh, you know, Richtofen obviously had his grand scheme, but then because of his grand scheme, um, Maxis sort of had this this plan to sort of counter Richtofen and then made things even even worse. Um, so it always felt like you were never really dealing with, with straight up good guys and bad guys. Um, you're always just dealing with someone who's outwardly evil and bad and then maybe someone who appears to be good. Um, right. But for a, ver a variety of reasons, whether it was well-intended or not, they wind up making things even worse. And it's kind of like that duality between the Shadow Man and Monty. Because I never really bought that either of them were, were good. I mean, to me, I think the Shadow Man is sort of the lesser of the two evils because I feel like his intentions are, are straightforward to try and... Um, you know, it's better to assimilate everything than go through whatever Monty is planning and Monty uh, sort of fits the bill of, of Satan or at least a devil like figure where, you know, they appear to be well intentioned and everything's good and perfect, but there's something more sinister um, beneath the surface. And then we have um, even, even Samantha, I mean, Samantha's now a, a good character. I mean, she was always like misunderstood, but it seemed like when she was like the controller, she was sort of corrupted and, you know, what happened there is she's seeking revenge on Richtofen. And, and I think they're still sort of playing with that now in Cold War, where, like, is she dark ether corrupted? But, yeah, it just it just always feels like we're, we're never really strictly good guys versus bad guys. It's just kind of people making a mess and then someone who's making an even bigger mess, and you kind of just pick your poison. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that even goes as far back as, like, Black Ops 2 with the... Maxis versus Rick yes. I mean, yeah. I was never, you know, a big fan of Maxis, obviously. But still, I, I mean, you can you can see how he's not quite all there. I mean, when he blew up the earth, he was just laughing maniacally. Yeah. And then um, I, yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot. I, I can't believe I didn't bring up Black Ops 2, because, yeah, he blows up the earth. And then isn't it in the timeline? He, uh, he, he becomes so bad that Monty just has to, like, erase him from existence because he's just he's too far gone yeah. see yeah it's interesting because like rick toffin's kind of framed as still being like his insane like he just wants power it's like everything's he's, he's evil too but like in retrospect when you reframe it he's trying to mend the rift right the rift that maxis opened up when he fired those rockets he's he's now been inside the pyramid he's seen ether he knows this is some horrible shit that's about to happen. These apocalypse are about to screw up the Earth. Yeah, and I It's think... like, we gotta close this right now. This is not good. We can't have this. And I think Rick Toffin's evil, but I think at the end of the day, he just kind of wants to have fun, like in his, whatever is in his, in his warped brain. Uh, um, yeah, see, I think I think if he was a little more straightforward with Stuhlinger, he probably, and I guess the whole group, they probably would have followed him in the end. Like, yeah. Instead, he's kind of a maniac. So why would they trust him? Yeah, he's more of like a wild card where Maxis is kind of like a, a tragic figure where I think he's just lost everything. So since he, he has nothing left, he's just going to take the whole world with him, like literally. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so that's kind of how, it, how it, yeah, it seems like Maxis, uh, even though he's, I guess, in some ways less evil than Richtofen, I think has the potential to do more damage because at the end of the day, if Richtofen just wants power and wants to control things, I mean, what good is it if he like, blows up the whole planet and kills everyone like he can't have you know what is he gonna do there so there's still some something i guess binding richtof into the world whereas maxis is just just kind of lost it to the point where i think even monty just has to like erase him because he's just too far gone yeah no definitely uh, on the topic of premise or i mean on this general topic um premise 
seems like a pretty straightforward, like... I, I, I mean, people were speculating that Richtofen was going to betray everybody, just because he's Richtofen, but, like, Primus Richtofen seems to be, like, quote-unquote, the good, the good one. Like, all these good intentions, his plan is to, like, fix everything. Because Monty's the bad guy, right? And it's like, he's going to yeah. fix everything. But, like, he, the reason that he fails inevitably and, like, keeps the cycle going is because he's kind of selfish. Like, he won't, uh, like, accept that he will have to die and that he's, like, tying, like, that the four of them are tying the ether together. And it's like, they're the reason this keeps going on and on and on. He doesn't yeah. seem to want to accept that. It takes Nikolai to accept that. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's like, even though he has great intentions, and he, it's just it's not the ending that he wanted or that could have happened. And like their sort of story is still, I mean, even though it was revealed in the end, but it's overshadowed by like what I guess pun intended by like Monty and the Shadow Man. So even though they're still Primus, I, I guess is the closest that we've gotten to good guys, and I, w I would argue that they're good guys. Um, you know, they're still working within the framework of Monty and the Shadow Man, and. Richtofen's hubris, and yeah, he wants to continue to find a way to fix it himself, uh, kind of, um, you know, dooms them, but it's still under the a larger narrative of some sinister being pulling the strings, just as kind of like Ultimus followed Ultimus Richtofen, Primus still sort of follows uh, this this plan that is ultimately connected to an even larger and, and, and uh, grander but evil uh, plan, so... I, I wanted to bring up one thing, just complete, kind of, kind of off topic, but not really. Uh, is the reason why Maxis doesn't have... Is it because Monty erased uh, Ultimus Maxis? I'm just thinking about that now. I'm pretty sure he, the, the the one that came in from Origins is the Eternal Soul, quote-unquote. I, I, I still don't get the Eternal Soul, Soul thing. Because I, I, I think the way yeah, Souls... But... Oh, I didn't want to cut you off. What were you about to say? Uh, that's, yeah, I think that that... The one from Origins is like the soul that he's gonna keep, and then just get rid of the rest. Okay, because it's like it seems to me that souls are fractured, and they all share like they're all connected through some weird universal world soul. Um, but it's I don't know if you'd say it's like a fragment of your psyche or whatever is just sort of like sent uh, through space and time. But it just to me would make sense that if it's this Ultimus Maxis. Um, and it's the you know cohesive soul before the universe splinters and fractures. If Monty then gets rid of that, it would you know why other Maxis might not have a soul, but who knows? I, how... I do. Oh, sorry, I, I'm just gonna say I, I do want to cap off the discussion talking yeah. about Cold War. I think the way things seem to be going, mm -hmm. it seems like what we're doing and what the the strange the stranger who is the who is Zykov, he's been sending like. I think he's he's been the one sending like the pack punch and the perks to us. Like he's been working on all this stuff, and all of it, you know, it functions off F's essence, right? I think it's been like implied that we're making the one stronger. Like the dark ether is getting worse and worse the more we oh, like kill a, zombies and keep going about what we're doing. Like blood sacrifice and even like right. the the uh, the the other things. I mean, yeah, it makes sense because for, you have a Requiem versus Omega group, right? And then you have the Nazis thrown into the mix and who or where or, you know, how, how they fall into play. But it's like, okay, Omega group's the bad guys. Maybe even Requiem is bad. Who knows if there's some, you know, internal corruption there. But then yeah, Requiem seems to be going in the way of, uh, yeah, there's definitely corruption in there. Yeah. So you have both groups, right? Possibly, you know, uh, one being worse than the other, or one appearing to be better than the other, and then behind them is something even worse. You have the one. So it, it kind of fits the theme of you're just damned no matter which way you look at it. Right. Even Sam now, who's yeah, kind of in the middle, she's been corrupted by the Dark Uther in some way. There, There's some part of her that's like yeah, to come out. That's kind of what I was trying to say earlier. It was like, I know she's, I wouldn't call her evil. Um, I think she's a, you know, a meant to be a good character but but yeah after exposure to the dark either now now i don't know is it bringing back traumatic memories who knows but uh yeah she's even gotten a, a little bit of a, a grayer bent to her so there's never it's just interesting a, like, to see kind of how we resolve the this game if it's even like a definitive resolution of like, like defeating the one or whatever or if it's he's it's, it's still going you know yeah it's, it's the even right. bigger one Right. So one is.
Yeah. <laughs> the most wantest. Our last topic of the night is about Treyarch, the Illuminati, and Tanbor Fudgley. So, so Matt, what is, what is the most like standout part of this? You think? Well, I guess the the maybe just go in chronological order. I think the first time you had any was the All Seeing Eye seen in a Varukt? Maybe it's in Varukt. I I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, but at least the explicit reference to the Illuminati would be Rick Toffin's quote, right? My service to the Illuminati can continue. So in yeah, and also he's got a quote. I don't the, the wiki says it's cut, but I'm pretty sure I've heard it. It's when you get an achievement. Uh, Rick Toffin will say, "I have been recognized by Treyarch," and then he cuts himself off and says, "The Illuminati," which that's like the first like, you know, they are the same um, mm. kind of connection so well it kind of yeah. it, it, it fits when you have like things like points being canonized in the game and like the explanation i guess is it's supposed to be like some higher dimensional entity messing with with reality i like, guess just like a game development company designing a universe so i guess it, it kind of fits like you have these these connections um right well see treyarch has their own companies in universe so Mm. I know there is so there's what's called three arc, and it's got the symbol, and they make the. I guess maybe the metal detector in five. Maybe if they make the. And then that's where also the you electrical see... trap part. I don't know. Yeah, but... you you see the all-seeing eye there too on the television in five. Yeah, so. yeah. five. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then another one that's interesting to me is they uh, they own the production company that's making Call of the Dead. So that one's a little more sus, I think. That they are... It's called that it is a very big... Uh, I mean, it's an important part of the Ultimus' journey. And I, I made a thread kind of recently t saying, like, maybe they were kind of influencing George Romero in some way. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's what I was about to say. Or, or it, if it wasn't even influencing, I mean, if they knew George Romero was interested in that stuff, they could have been the means to, to fund yeah, it. They, yeah, they... They have fun the the Siberia trip, yeah. Because we were talking about that before. Like, how does he get this information? I mean, I guess it would make sense that maybe some eccentric organization reaches out to George, provides him with the the means to travel, and there you go. Right, right. Um, and then you've also got Tanbor Fudgley Co. So, I mean, to explain Tanbor Fudgley, Tanbor Fudgley is like this. Uh, it's like a it's like lore in in Treyarch Studios. It's like an in joke. They're like it's like a guy that supposedly founded the company in like the 1800s or something. Um, and isn't he also like the the model uh, employee yeah, or something like that? Like, like the best employee. Yeah. Yeah. Like his his values. Um, yeah. So it's, it's another company. Yeah. So Tambor Fudgley Co. Which I guess they made the. I guess it was like the comic loading screen. the moon loading screen. Mm. I'm assuming it has something to do with the comic, but um. And they're also located in Santa Monica, California. Obviously, that's where Treyarch is from. Um, so I guess maybe it's like a whole bunch of different shell companies. And if you want to say they're they're the Illuminati, I guess they're all shell companies for the Illuminati. If you wanted to yeah. go that far. Totally. Um, I mean, I think it's kind of fitting, right? In, in that Treyarch uh, using historical material, even like like uh, you no know, conspiracy theory and stuff with zombies, but with the creation of the Black Ops story, uh, trying to pull from historical documents, and that I guess it makes sense that in universe that Treyarch almost exists, kind of as like you said, as this shell company for this organization making games about things that you know uh, actually happened because they have some direct connection to channels of information. So it's like a neat little like meta joke, I guess, about the whole process that. Right. Uh, you know, if you really want to go deep, is is uh, are there sort of three layers? Like, there's the in the in game. You know, are we characters in a game based on something that happened outside of the game that's being like in this fictional universe? Like, well, it's funny you you kind of bring up like that layers kind of thing. Yeah, because because this up there's another one, uh, another like thing that's kind of tied to this. There's a. On the mission numbers in Black Ops, there's an image on the wall, and it's a real life image of. I'm pretty. Sure, I think someone said it's Clark Gasnova. Mm. I'm not. I don't. Not 100 sure on that, but he's holding the GK Nova like briefcase, like the ones they spiral. <laughs> uh -huh. It's like a real world picture, 
So it's in in then I mean GK Nova is has like like quote unquote real documents. Like the implication is that GK Nova documents are like declassified government documents about like you know stuff behind the scenes like Dr. Blom and all that. It's it's worth looking into on your own. But so it's it's a weird cyclical thing where it's the real world and there's real world documents that tease the game, but it's also in the game. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. It's like a sort of like the, the zombies iceberg that there's three tiers, right? There's our world where Treyarch's making the game, but the in but the Treyarch game are actually within another level, right? Which is another or another layer of a fictional world that all these events happened that this fictional Treyarch company is making a a game about. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I I mean it's like, oh, nice little Easter egg, Clark S. Nova. But at this point, who who knows what is or isn't <laughs> meant? I mean, right? It's it's a yeah, it's a it's a deep rabbit hole. Um, there's another one that I find interesting. It's on Shangri La. Oh. So after you shoot the the crystals in the Easter egg, mm -hmm. there's like a you'll see the Treyarch symbol, like kind of yeah, the Trinity floating in the yeah, the Trinity. So the Shangri La has some weird ties to the Illuminati. To where I mean, obviously both have like, you know, significance, but almost looks like an atom like, too. Kind yeah, of. yeah, no, I can see that too. But so the, the, there's actually Illuminati, an Illuminati cipher in the map. Something about dragons fire, which that's something worth talking about another day. I think I, I definitely want to talk about dragons at some point. But was that in the original or Chronicles as well? I mean, it was, that was in the original. Okay. Yeah, it, it, I think the cipher is like "Fear of the Dragons Fire." I swore somewhere at some point in time there was like a a, a te not a teaser. Oh, well, I guess it was a teaser for for Shangri La, but they mentioned something about like unseen creatures or unseen beasts. I, I swear I remember that, but I can't find it. Yeah, so. no, it's it's definitely true. And I think like also it's also interesting because. After Richtofen goes to Shangri La, like mm. he teleports there in the, the moon radio, and apparently according to the timeline, immediately after he comes back, he decides to leave the Illuminati. So I'm wondering what did he see there that he, he decided he's going to leave the Illuminati. I'm, I'm thinking like maybe they were already here at Shangri La and they just didn't tell him. Like they had discovered certain things and he just left that information out, didn't tell him about it. So now that he sees it and sees their connection. Maybe the, that's why he leaves. I don't know. Like did, a head cannon. Yeah, did Primus? Primus Richtofen never left the Illuminati, right? No. Yeah, no. He uh, that's a shame. used them to, to build the uh, labs. Well, there's the whole thing with Illuminati and potentially in Dimension 63, they're the ones that like make uh, Group 935. Well, because I was... I was just thinking, like, it'd be interesting if Primus was trying to leave the Illuminati, and it's almost like a Stanley Parable type thing where he's trying to break out of the game. Yeah, I think at the very least, Treyarch being, like you said, some subsidiary of the Illuminati would kind of be funny. I'm sure there's definitely more, there's probably plenty more Treyarch references everywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the Illuminati are also referenced, um, I guess it, it, this would be... I think in some of the Black Ops intel, right? Because they have a list of like secret societies mm. and groups. Yeah. Um So that's true too. And then yeah, so I think it's there's they definitely exist. I, I think it is a fun way that Treyarch kind of inserts itself into the universe that they're some game company, but maybe they have some right. nefarious uh, purpose. It makes Dempsey's fourth wall break seem a little bit more um, <laughs> yeah valid. That's a, it's like a simulation, or that's what I mean, like a game within a game. That they're in a fictional unit, they're in a game in a fictional universe. But right, I don't know. So who, I guess who who is above who is is the, is the Illuminati above, or the Illuminati slash Treyarch above the one? You know. Mm. Well, maybe it's like the one, and all of them exist, but they're like a, you know, the the ones in the game are are, are just programs, or maybe because the one is is I don't know extremely powerful it can manifest within the fictional or within like a game because it's all code and you know electricity and all that shit so who knows like maybe maybe, maybe their souls trapped within a game right like uh oh. that could be something we're all trapped in a game we're all, yeah that's true we're all on the next black ops game be sure to like and subscribe just give us ideas if you got any